The spirit of the Antichrist is already here in the world. And that spirit will continue to grow until the coming of the actual Antichrist. But I'd like to take some time to explore the stages of descent, the downhill drift, if you will, that leads to Antichrist behavior, Antichrist thinking. Because it applies not only to a culture as a whole, but it applies to individual people. Now, in the prophetic book of Daniel, it's so interesting to me that in Daniel chapters 2, 3, and 4, in that order, we see a progression of Antichrist thinking and then behavior in the life of King Nebuchadnezzar. Now that Babylonian King Nebuchadnezzar, the one who took God's people into exile, the one who threw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into the fiery furnace, the one who received interpretations of dreams from Daniel, that Nebuchadnezzar is a foreshadowing of the coming Antichrist. But God has been so good in Daniel's chapter 2, 3, and 4 to show us the progression that led to Nebuchadnezzar really engaging with an Antichrist spirit. First of all, in Daniel chapter 2, God graciously gives Nebuchadnezzar a dream and the interpretation of the dream through Daniel. And the dream is of a statue. And the statue has a head of gold. And then it has a chest and arms of silver. And then it has a middle of bronze, legs of iron, and then feet and toes mixed of iron and clay. God gives Nebuchadnezzar the interpretation of that dream and clearly tells him that Nebuchadnezzar is the head of gold. It, it is his kingdom, the kingdom of Babylon, that was ruling the world at the time. But God made him sure to know that that would have an end and that then there would come another kingdom, the kingdom of silver, the Persians, the Medo-Persians. And then after that would come the Greeks and then after that would come the Roman Empire. And finally, the revived Roman Empire or the kingdom of what we know, the coming Antichrist. But in that dream, God told Nebuchadnezzar, each piece, each kingdom will have its place and will have its end. But finally, there's gonna be a stone that is cut by no human hand that's gonna roll into the statue, bust it up to pieces. All of those kingdoms are gonna blow away like chaff in the wind, and that stone will turn into a mountain, an everlasting kingdom. And of course, that's the kingdom of Jesus Christ, his millennial reign on into eternity. So Nebuchadnezzar was clearly told, yeah, God has given you a kingdom, but it has an end, and it is God who has given it to you. I find it incredible that in the very next chapter, after Nebuchadnezzar receiving that information from the Lord, he decides to erect. Now remember, God had given him a dream of a statue where his own kingdom and authority had an end under God's sovereignty. In the very next chapter, Nebuchadnezzar decides to erect a 90-foot tall all gold statue a 90 foot tall image that's all gold and and tells the whole world that they have to worship this image it was probably an image of himself but nonetheless it was all gold do you get it god had told him that only the head of the previous statue from the lord which was a foreshadowing of coming events that only the head was gold but that wasn't good enough for Nebuchadnezzar. He wanted the whole thing to be gold. He wanted all of history and, 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 and everything to hinge on him and his power. And so he erects a statue that's pure gold, the whole thing, and asks everyone to worship that image. Wow, what a foreshadowing of the coming Antichrist who will step into the temple in Jerusalem and demand at point of death that everyone take the mark of the beast and worship that image. 
But the bigger point I want to make is Nebuchadnezzar had no humility. He was not humble before the Lord. He was not thankful for the place that God had given him in history. Rather, he wanted to take it all for himself. That's the spirit of the Antichrist against Christ, against God himself, putting ourself as the center of everything. And then in chapter 4, after his continual pride and rebellion against what God had told him, we see that God tells Nebuchadnezzar, you're going to go mad. Basically, you're going to be insane for seven years. You're going to become like an animal, like a beast of the field. And that's exactly what happened. He lived outdoors and he went insane. And he, he grew like feathers on his body and claws. And he was insane, living like an animal. Daniel chapter 4. That happened for seven years until God finally restored his sanity. The time of the Antichrist that is coming upon the world, and we're building toward it quickly, is going to be a time of utter madness and sanity. The world is going to be total chaos, and we can see it heading there. Of course, spiritual chaos. There's going to be political chaos, emotional chaos, financial chaos. But the progression is God gives us revelation. God tells us what is true of himself and of us. And if we ignore that and want to be the center of our own world, the center of the universe, if we shirk God and rebel against him, and we want rather to be our own God and to be worshipped, then we're going to head toward insanity, absolute chaos, inability to think rationally, and, and that's exactly what's happening in the world today. We've taught kids for so long in public schools that they're nothing more than highly evolved animals. And so we have people living like animals, going by pure you know, animal instinct rather than rational thinking and application of God's word and God's truth. Crazy, crazy times. But the progression is clearly there. Now, the Antichrist proper, the one who comes onto the world scene, he's actually going to set himself up after breaking a peace treaty with Israel. He'll set himself up in the temple in Jerusalem and demand to be worshipped. He'll put an image of himself there and demand to be worshipped. The Apostle Paul tells us of that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. But what I want you to know is, we can engage in the same type of behavior because we as Christians are supposed to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. But if we take our own selves, our own desires, our own wants, and put those ahead of what God wants and what God declares and what God says, then we're effectively putting ourselves, setting ourselves up in the temple that is supposed to be God's temple and we are proclaiming ourselves to be the God of our own lives. The devil is cunning. And that's why I wanted to share this with you. Remember, the spirit of the Antichrist is already in the world. And he is against Christ, against Jesus. That Antichrist spirit is against Jesus, God in the flesh. Jesus is supposed to be Lord. Let us remember Nebuchadnezzar. Take God at his word, what God says about himself, and what he says our place of value is in him. We don't take the reins in our own hands, because that always leads to trouble. The stages of descent are rebellion against God and everything he's revealed, which leads to excessive pride and being our own God rather than letting Jesus be Lord of our lives, which leads to insanity and animal-like living and chaos. That's what's coming upon the whole world very soon. What's well, already here. But it can also come upon each one of us unless we stay in God's word, humble ourselves before the Lord, and keep calling on Jesus Christ as Savior and Master of everything. God bless you.